pleased to introduce Peter Carp. Peter's been um, had a long time association with this uh, this conference. Um, Peter's at uh, SRI International in California. Peter's going to be talking about recent developments in the Pathway Tools software and biopsych um, databases. So, Peter. Thank you, Dominic, and for organizing the session and sharing so many sessions here of the Tech Track. So let me tell you about some recent developments in both our Pathway Tools software and in the BioPsych database collection. Pathway Tools is one of the largest bioinformatics software systems, as far as I'm aware. Um, it's, and it has, has many different features, many different areas that it works in. It's a systems biology, uh, genomics software environment that lets a user create and maintain organism databases to query, visualize, and web publish those databases with emphases on genome informatics, pathway informatics, and regulatory informatics. It also allows you to generate a steady state metabolic flux model from a pathway genome database managed by the software using flux balance analysis. It has a number of tools for interpretation of omics data sets, and that'll be one of the, my emphases for this presentation. It has a number of comparative analyses, analysis tools, and it's been licensed by more than 8,000 groups to date. And, and for a few recent publications on Pathway Tools, um, I'll, I'll Note that the first one is a complete overview of Pathway Tools available through BioArchive, too long to publish in any journal. Uh, so appreciated the ability to use BioArchive for that publication. Here, here's a bird's eye view of what Pathway Tools does. Its input is an annotated genome. And we run the pathologic inference component on that annotated genome to create a new Pathway Genome Database it contains all the annotated genome information plus the predicted metabolic network of the organism. That can then be fed into the Metaflux component of Pathways Tools to build a quantitative metabolic flux model. It can be fed into the Pathway Genome Navigator to do a wide range of query and analysis and omics data analysis tasks. And then the editor tools are interactive tools for updating the database which are what our curators for the EcoPsych and MetaPsych projects use. Overview of BioPsych. So BioPsych is a collection of 9,300 pathway genome databases, most of which were created by us at SRI. A number of the BioPsych databases were created by outside groups and then passed back to us at SRI to host. It consists of predicted metabolic reactions and pathways and metabolomes for organisms with sequenced genomes. Uh, for a few of the databases, we have metabolic models. There's also atom mapping of information available for most of the databases. And overall, the contents of BioPsych really combine computationally predicted information with information we've loaded from a number of public bioinformatics databases and in addition with curated information that we've curated at SRI from more than 66,000 publications. And basically, BioPsych is powered by the Pathway Tool software, so all of its um, omics data analysis and query and visualization capabilities are available. Uh, a couple of examples are the ability to paint gene expression data or metabolomics data onto individual pathways or onto multi-pathway diagrams that we call pathway collages, and also onto full organism-specific metabolic map diagrams. We also have enrichment analysis tools. Now, a handful of the databases in BioPsych are very highly curated, and I'll, I'm listing the, the most highly curated databases here, uh, both for the model gram negative and the model gram positive, E. coli and B. subtilis. The human database has been curated from many publications, as have the Arabidopsis and yeast and mouse databases. Now, on to what's new. That was a quick overview of BioPsych and Pathway Tools. And I'm, I'll be talking about four main new things going on. Uh, one we call update notifications. And the idea is that we have an essentially an ontology-based alerting system where a user can sign up to be 
notified of new database curation in their interest areas. Well, how do they define their interest areas? Not through keywords, but through, by defining either a list of genes that they're interested in, a list of pathways that they're interested in, or a list of gene ontology terms that they're interested in. For example, if they're interested in, say, cell adhesion, which is a gene ontology process term, they can select that as their interest area, and then on each new release of Biopsych, we'll match the updated genes in that release against each user's defined interests. And if any of the genes that were updated are genes involved in cell adhesion, the user will get an email notifying them. And the way we know our definition of an update is that if there's at least one new publication for that gene in this version of the database compared to the previous version, we consider that to be an update on the assumption that if significant curation has gone on, then a new publication will be cited. All right, another new tool that we released in our last release is called the Omics Dashboard. And it's a new interactive tool for analysis of high throughput data sets. It can be used for metabolomics data, gene expression data, proteomics data. We can also use it to analyze uh, reaction flux data coming out of our metabolic modeling tools. And it has a number of use cases, including quickly surveying how all the cellular systems are responding to some stimulus, and examining, very quickly being able to examine specific pathways or specific subsystems of the cell of interest, and gauging visually very quickly relative expression levels of different subsystems, and seeing essentially what resources is the cell putting into different subsystems. And it's available both through the Biopsych website and through the downloadable version of Pathway Tools, which, by the way, is free to academics and available for a fee to commercial organizations. So here's a visual summary of the omics dashboard. It has two main components, which we call panels. So a panel, uh, I guess I need the, uh, let's see. So each one of these horizontal are you seeing the mouse pointer? There's a pointer. Yes, okay. So each of these horizontal extents is a panel, and a panel consists of a series of plots, okay? Each plot describes one cellular subsystem. And if you can read these labels, you'll see that much of the dashboard is devoted to metabolism. So the top panel is about biosynthesis, with uh, plots for amino acid biosynthesis, nucleotide biosynthesis, fatty acid and lipid biosynthesis, et cetera. But there are panels devoted to non other areas of cell function besides metabolism. So there's a central dogma panel, which I'm having trouble reading, but its components include transcription, translation, DNA metabolism, RNA metabolism, protein metabolism, protein folding, and secretion. And actually, the, the newest version of the dashboard has several additional non-metabolism uh, plots as well. And the idea is that we're, we're looking here at, at an E. coli gene expression data set where the E. coli are being transitioned from um, anaerobic to aerobic growth over six or so time points. And so each of the six vertical lines that you're seeing correspond to those six time points. And then each dot that you're seeing corresponds to one gene expression measurement um, in that subsystem. And really key point, the large dots are the averages of all the genes in that subsystem at that point in time. So the idea is that what the la dashboard is le letting you do is to see what's happening for each of those su subsystems overall. What's the average response of that subsystem over time? So an, another key notion is that the set of panels and plots that you see actually changes somewhat depending on what organism you're looking at and what data set you're looking at. So for example, um, a photosynthetic organism is going to have a plot for photosynthesis, whereas a non-photosynthetic organism will not because the, the software looks at what subsystems are available for in each pathway genome database. So the dashboard is driven from a pathway tools pathway genome database. 
And also, if, if there were no expression data available for any of the genes in photosynthesis, say, that plot would also be omitted. So the plots are defined, e each plot is defined as a set of one or more metapsych pathways and one or more gene ontology terms. So that's how the software knows which genes to put in each plot. But the user can define new plots and can remove plots from any panel. And another key aspect of the dashboard is that the user can click on any plot to drill down and see a new level of detail, which we'll see in just a minute. Uh, a few notes on using the dashboard. You want to apply normalization and significant cal significance calculations before you upload dash data from the dashboard. You import the data as a column delimited file with gene identifiers or names in the first column and other data values in the other columns. Um, one thing that we found really useful is to essentially run the dashboard twice for a given data set, once with all genes and once with only the significantly changing genes. Because often with all the genes, the averages kind of wash out the changes that are going on. And if you look only at the significantly changing genes, you see more signal. But, it, but nonetheless, Another thing we found about the dashboard, which I'll give you an example of in a minute, is that often the significance calculations and thresholds, we think, are missing biologically important results, which is a reason to look at the all genes version of the data set, because I think the dashboard lets you see things visually that the significance calculations are, are missing or are throw, tossing out based on the thresholds. So how do you invoke the omics dashboard? Well, from BioPsych, under the analysis menu, you go to omics dashboard, you get this page where you can load in the file you have and specify various options. So I talked about this ability to drill down to see more detail. So same data set, what I've done here is to click on amino acid biosynthesis, which as we can see is ramping up during this shift to aerobic growth probably because the overall cell growth rate is ramping up. And what we get when we click there is frame A, let's ignore B for the moment. Frame A is now showing us the same type of visualization, but for every amino acid biosynthetic pathway. So here we're seeing, ah, oh, it's unfortunately cut off at the bottom, but at the bottom we have labels for alanine biosynthesis, arginine biosynthesis, each amino acid pathway is a separate plot here. Um, so we're dissecting out each individual pathway to see how they're responding, but with the same basic idea of each dot is one gene expression measurement in that pathway, and the large dots are the averages. Then we can click again to get this additional level of detail, where again the labels are cut off, unfortunately. But here we're looking at the gene level. So we're seeing for the pathway that we've clicked on, we're seeing the expression levels of each individual gene in the pathway. And the same type of drill down can occur um, in any of the plots in any of the panels. If you want to look at what's happening with transcription, you can do that. If you want to look at what's happening with energy metabolism in detail, you can do that as well. Now here's another set of visualizations that are available from within the dashboard. Another operation when you're at the pathway level is to request a view of the pathway that shows all of the omics measurements for each of the genes in the pathway. You can also ask for an operon view of all the genes in that pathway. You can also ask to see a similar plot of all the regulators for the genes in that pathway, where the, regu the regulation information is also queried out of the pathway genome database. So if we're looking at the TCA cycle, we can ask to see what are the expression levels of every gene that regulates a gene in the TCA cycle. Okay, now here, what we've done is there's a sigma factor plot, which we've clicked on, and now we're seeing the expression levels of each gene, each sigma factor gene in E. coli. And if we, this is the all genes view because if we looked at only those genes considered to be changing statistic, in a statistically significant fashion using a cutoff of 
uh, twofold and I think 95% significance, the only gene that would be left is FEC-I. It's changing a lot. However, you can see pretty clearly that during this shift from anaerobic to aerobic growth, two or three, I mean, these two sigma factors in particular are, are changing a lot in a stepwise, almost purely monotonic fashion. So it's quite clear that there's a biological signal here, but if you had looked only at the significance calculation, all of these genes would be thrown away by the thresholds that we used anyway, which I think are pretty standard thresholds. Okay, so feel free to play around with the dashboard through our Biopsych website. Let me tell you now about another new tool. For several years in Biopsych, we've had a tool called Metabolic Root Search. What metabolic root search lets the user do is define a starting metabolite of interest and an ending metabolite of interest. And given the selected organism database, the current database, um, the software will compute an optimal metabolic root that connects the starting compound to the ending compound. Where that optimal root optimizes two things, it minimizes the number of reactions in the root and it also maximizes the number of conserved atoms from the starting molecule to the ending molecule based on atom mapping information in our databases. Well, we've extended that single organism metabolic root search tool to become a multi-organism metabolic root search tool that can search for metabolic roots across organism communities. So if we want to know, for example, how does the human gut microbiome convert compound X to compound Y, now the user has to specify a starting and an ending compound, X and Y. They also specify a set of biopsych organisms of interest. Um, and they can do that by clicking on as many organisms of interest as they're interested in, or they can define organism sets that you can reuse or use existing organism sets in biopsych, like all organisms in biopsych in the human gut microbiome. And now the, the software searches for a minimal cost route through the union of all the reactions in all of the selected organisms. So essentially the first thing we do when doing this calculation is to assemble a new reaction network that is, contains the union of all reactions across all the selected organisms. So another new tool. Oops, okay. So in summary, the omics dashboard provides a top-down, organism-wide, system-level view of a gene expression data set or a metabolomics data set or a proteomics data set that lets you quickly identify um, the overall responses of different cellular subsystems and drill down to examine those sub cellular subsystems in as much detail as you like. And we think it complements other forms of transcriptomics analysis. The tool's available at biopsych.org. Uh, now, another change that's happened at Biopsych in the last year is that we've gone to a subscription model. And so currently, through the Biopsych website, uh, we provide completely free access to anyone for the E. coli database and the Metapsych database because those are funded by uh, the NIH. But a subscription is now required for access to the other organisms in Biopsych. You do get a small number of free views, just like the New York Times or other newspaper sites, but we use the subscription revenues on a nonprofit basis to support the further curation of Biopsych, because the government just seems unwilling to pay for the amount of curation that's really needed for all the sequenced organisms. And also you can use uh, these tools from the downloadable Pathway Tools software, which is free for academic research. And let me acknowledge uh, my colleagues here. Uh, the dashboard was implemented by Suzanne Paley, and uh, this was all funded by the NIH. Happy to take questions if I have a minute or two. Thanks, Peter. And again, and again, we have some handouts uh, on my chair there toward the middle of the room if anybody would like a Pathway Tools handout. Okay, so are there any questions, comments, thoughts? All right. Okay.
Okay, thank you very much, Peter.